Good evening. The regular notice requirement of the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act has been complied with in that adequate advance notice of this meeting was given at least 48 hours in advance. On January 19th, 2023, notice was mailed to the Carrier Post, Philadelphia Inquirer, and posted on the district website. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. We'll prepare for roll call, please. Ms. Alvarez. Ms. Gillespie. Present. Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Hudson. Ms. Jackson. Present. Mr. Leva Martinez. Here. Ms. Merricks. Vice President Nelson. Present. President Muhammad. Present. We do have a quorum. At this time, Board President, I may ask for a motion to approve the minutes of our prior board meeting, along with the, the board minutes of the closed executive session minutes for various periods. Is there a motion, please? Motion, we have a motion by uh, Board Member Labor Martinez with a second by President Mohammed. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion to approve the prior board minutes as well as the prior executive session minutes is hereby approved. At this time, ladies and gentlemen of the public, the board will now be going to executive, close executive session for approximately 15 to 20 minutes for discussion of monthly HIB updates, as well as the uh, MOU status with the Federation of School Psychologists. May I have a motion, please? Second. <clears throat> we have a motion by Ms. Gillespie with a second by the board president to go into executive session as of 534. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing none, the board is now in closed executive session. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall be returning in approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed, may the record reflect that board member Merricks and board member Gonzalez have joined the board at 5.39 and 5.43 p.m. respectfully. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, I now may open the floor and request a motion to adjourn executive session and return to open public session as of 5.54 p.m. We have a motion by Ms. Gillespie and a second by Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, we are officially closed out of executive session and returning to open public session as of 554. <clears throat> Next, ladies and gentlemen, we have our uh, committee reports, and we will begin with our Finance and Operations Committee being reported out by Vice President Nelson. Thank you, Ray. Uh, for our Finance and Operations Committee, uh, took place today, June 27th. Uh, Ray Cox and Anamdi Nelson was present. Uh, our conversations were QSAC scores, uh, finance, we have a preliminary passing score presently. Uh, finance ratify a new contract with the Federation of School Psychologists, Psychologists. facility product projects, uh, athletic complexes, demolition work underway of existing concrete structures. Concrete pads will be installed for the placement of bleachers. New bleachers scheduled to be installed the first week of August. Uh, veterans edition, veterans auditorium contract being awarded. Veterans library awarding contract. Davis school awarding contract. Uh, transportation, multiple challenges. Uh, bids have been submitted. Uh, challenge underwent uh, legal review. And we also spoke about uh, Camden High's um, uh, football field, uh, the, uh, what is that called? Uh, the field house. Um, so a project underway uh, to get funds to redo the, the field house, but in the interim, um, redoing um, the, what are they called? Modules. The trailers, modules, um, to, you know, kind of supplement uh, while we're waiting to get additional funds. That completes our report. Thank you, Vice President Nelson. 
Next, ladies and gentlemen, we will not have a report out from our teaching and learning committee or our policy and governance committees, but we will have the first reading of, pol of a revision to policy 6146 regarding district graduation requirements. The first reading of the policy goes as such. The board is requesting revisions to the graduation requirements policy to require two additional courses needed to graduate. Beginning with the incoming freshman class for the 2023-2024 school year, all students will be required to complete at least 2.5 credits in African American studies and 2.5 credits in Latinx studies as part of the 120 total minimum credits needed in order to meet the district's graduation requirements. May I respectfully have a motion to accept and approve the first reading of the revisions for policy 6146. Motion to accept. We have a motion, we have a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have one abstention. And motion to accept the first reading is hereby approved. At this time, I'll now turn the meeting over to our superintendent to present the monthly superintendent's report. Excuse me, Ray. I just want to um, say two things about that policy and government uh, committee. Although we don't have a, a committee report to report out because we got kind of a little lost in translation from the uh, um, graduations from last week and other schedules really didn't add up. But I, I, just, don't, I just don't want us to underscore um, something that, and speaking with the district, Madam Superintendent, that, as she said, before it should have been done years ago, but we finally got it done in making African American studies as well as Latinx studies a requirement for graduation in a district where other districts around the state and country uh, have been doing that for some years. And I uh, just don't wanna un underscore that, number one. And number two, I don't wanna underscore, I don't know if I'm gonna be uh, ahead of myself, is the fact that the uh, strong work that, um, uh, board member Naima Gillespie did in advocating over the years for, um, I don't know if he was going to announce it. Yes, the, the code of conduct uh, manual that we have. And um, I just think that should be acknowledged. I mean, because for two reasons, uh, it highlights the great work that many of us do behind the scenes that's not in front of the camera, that all of them, I can say each uh, say something about each one of these board members that here that work behind the scenes to make sure that they make some substantive change with our um, in trajectory and where we're going at with education. So I just wanted to just highlight that and um, commend them for the great work that they did and they continue to do. Thank you all. Thank you, board president. At this Hear the superintendent's presentation. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our June advisory board meeting. We look forward to sharing with you all of the things that have happened uh, during the month of June, and we hope to bring you highlights as we close out uh, a wonderful school year. Next slide, please. Before we begin, however, we do want to take this opportunity to pause and to reflect and to really uh, think deeply and provide a moment of silence in honor of the lives of the individuals who are listed on the slide. First, one of our students, Anderson Diaz Ushpa. Additionally, a retired, uh, one of our retired and very beloved, beloved coaches and mentors, Coach Hansen, student, Nathan Burgos, and last but not least, a retired English teacher from Hatch Middle School, as well as a Camden High School librarian, Ms. Hazel Taft Nemo, who served our district for 30 years. Let's please take a moment as we think about the life and legacy of these individuals. Thank you.
to shift gears for a moment, we are very, very excited about our students who graduated and made it across the finish line um, for the class of 2023. We gave them many uh, rounds of applause and accolades and had a wonderful time celebrating them uh, last week, but we want to make sure that we take this moment um, to celebrate our graduates of the class of 2023, whether they graduated from kindergarten, eighth grade, high school, we congratulate each of them for making it through. And to our young adults, as you prepare for your next season, whether it be college, the world of work, the military, trade school, whatever it is that our young people desire, please know that we look forward to seeing how you will change your communities and more importantly, change the world. So again, we are very, very proud of all of our graduates for the class of 2023. Let's give them a round of applause again. Next slide, please. So as with all of our board meetings tonight, we will focus on some key topics for the month of June. Next slide. So uh, one of the things that I want to do at this time, and it is required and mandated by law that we do so, is to share our report of student safety data systems, our SSDS report for the second half of the year. In order for our students to thrive academically and social emotionally from grades pre-K through 12, we must ensure, and we know it, that they feel safe and that they feel fully included in their learning environments. As a school district, we are required to report to the board twice a year on our, our student safety data system. We reported in January, and this evening I will report on the second half of the school year. So all public schools in New Jersey, as well as all approved private schools for students with disabilities must report annually on the SSDS. The Camden City School District must certify that all schools in the district have reported to the S on the SD SDS, my apologies, at the end of report period one, which is now at this uh, board meeting, and again after report period two. So we are in our second reporting cycle. Next slide. The incidents are reported publicly by the New Jersey Department of Education in the following five categories. Violence, vandalism, substance offenses, weapons offenses, and confirmed HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. The total district count is 105 total incidents in SSDS for the period of January through June 2023. This slide shows the data by school and by type. The blue bar represents the total number of incidents. The burnt orange bar shows those that were reported as violence. The gray shows vandalism. The gold or yellow shows substance offenses and the lighter blue shows weapons and the green captures others. Again, this information will be um, posted on our website. Next slide. So this slide just shows out of the 37 district-wide HIB investigations completed, what percentage uh, was uh, made up at, what percentage each school made up of that 37. And so the breakdown of percentage by school is color-coded for your convenience. So approximately 21% were at Morgan Village, 19% were at Yorkship. And again, that's out of 37 total. So this helps us to be able to pinpoint, identify um, where our needs are as we plan, not only professional development, but other supports to ensure that we are able to reduce these numbers. Next slide. So of the 37 HIB investigations, 21 were founded, and that number includes 24 students. The following charts will provide a high-level overview of the details by school and per month. Next slide. So the monthly information has been presented at each board meeting from January through June, and in January there were two cases of at Morgan Village Middle School and one case at Yorkship. 
Next slide. In February, there was one case at Yorkshire and one at Morgan Village Middle School. Next slide. The next three slides captures the data from March. Three from Caddo. Next slide, please. And three at Cooper's Point. Next slide, please. Three at Yorkship, one at Morgan Village Middle School, and two at BPLA. Next slide. In April, there were seven HIB investigations. One was at Camden High School, one was at Caddo, one was at Cream, one was at Morgan Village Middle School. Next slide, please. Two were at Yorkship, and one was at Vets. Next slide, please. In May, there were seven. One was at Brim, two were at Cream, and on the next slide, one was at H.B. Wilson, and the remaining three of that seven were at Morgan Village Middle School. Next slide. And finally, for this reporting, in the month of June, there were six investigations one was at Brim, as shown on this slide. Next slide. Two were at Cream. Next slide. And one was at Forest Hill, and one was at BPLA. So the district-wide training uh, this slide has this information. I want to say a little bit more here because it's one thing to list out all of the numbers in each of the categories. Again, that gives us a, an indication of what we need to do. And we are at the point in the year where we're reflecting on our practices and looking forward to the summer so that we can begin to train our staff and get everyone in place so that we're able to reduce these numbers. So of course, as important as it is to capture the incidents, it is just as important to determine how to get in front of them to help our students. Annually, all staff must complete the GCN training or Global Compliance Network training for district level administrators, district level anti-bullying coordinators, school level administrators, school anti-bullying specialists and teachers. Our training is focused in the following areas. Anti-bullying Bill of Rights Act, characteristics or needs of individuals or groups at risk for HIV, including those who bully victims of HIV and bystanders. The other, conflict resolution, cyberbullying, HIB consequences, HIB, prevent, HIB intervention, HIB preventions, parent involvement in HIB cases, peer relationships or peer social norms, school climate and culture improvement, social norms, school, social skills, relationship improvement, and critically, suicide prevention related to HIV. Next slide. So on this slide, we have some of the programs that are being incorporated and that we will continue to build upon as we move into the new school year. Establishing social norms, building relationships, the implementation of MTSS, our multi-tiered system of supports in all schools, the initiation of calming rooms and spaces, mentoring, PBSIS, in-house suspension with restorative practices, dedication to social emotional learning, the initiation of the HERO program, summer bridge opportunities, and community partnerships such as the one we have with Women of the Dream and Parent University. So that concludes our SSDS reporting. We will now go into our next few slides, which will take us into our teaching and learning updates. So as shared last month, our summer school program starts July 5th. Um, July 5th, and we are ready, and we are committed to delivering a comprehensive program that is community-centered, based on student needs, and to ensure that all of our students and families have access to an exciting, socially enriching, academically challenging, and meaningful summer enrichment experience. We are happy to welcome our students from rising kindergarten to 12th grade to our summer programs. Next slide. And the great news is anyone, 
Anyone who has applied to our summer program is automatically accepted. Everyone who has applied is automatically accepted. Understanding that some young people experience learning loss during the summer months, it is our goal to keep the educational process in full swing by keeping our students engaged. So this slide, as you can see it, details our program from Rising K again, so our pre-K students. There's a program to eighth grade. The program will be from 8.30 I'm sorry, this program I'm referring to now is just for rising K to eighth graders. The program will be from 8.30 a.m. till 2.30 p.m. at Caddo and at H.B. Wilson. Next slide. Credit recovery is so critical as we want to ensure that our graduation rate continues to rise and that we are offering opportunities for students to get back on track with their credit, uh, with their number of credits and to recover what they need to. So for our middle and high school students, that's middle and high school students in summer school for credit recovery, the program will be Monday through Thursday with remote learning on Fridays from 8.30 a.m. till 12.30 at both the Eastside High School and Camden High campuses. So we have uh, a program at each of our comprehensive high schools that will service any middle and high school student in this category this summer. Students who were unsuccessful in certain courses have an opportunity to earn grades and credits they need to stay on track. Registration for credit recovery will be in person at both high schools, uh, at both high school locations up until August 4th from 8.30 to 12.30 and virtual on Fridays. Families and students should work with their counselors at their schools or roster chairs to confirm which courses they should complete in credit recovery. Most of our students have done that, but our team is still on hand if we wanna make sure that any students who are registering late have that information. Next slide. It's also important that we provide our rising ninth grade students. That transition is very critical and we wanna set our students up who are entering high school for success. So our summer bridge program will also be offered uh, this summer to ensure that smooth transition for, transition for our freshman scholars. The high school bridge program provides students and their families with an opportunity to spend time in their new high schools before the year begins so they'll know how to navigate, they'll know, they will know um, where things are and who, more importantly, is in place to support them. They will be able to meet the administrative team, meet with their counselor, and spend time interacting with members of the school culture and climate teams. As part of the Summer Bridge programs, the high school leaders have prepared activities that students will participate in. This includes activities such as team building, relationship building, so it is very critically important because we want to ensure our students are supported in that transition and that their family members, their parents, uh, can ask any questions, questions needed so that we work together to ensure our, our students have uh, success in high school. Next slide, for our ELL students in grades K through eight, we offer our bilingual ESL summer program, and this slide lists the details of the curriculum. Next slide. The district will be offering transportation for our summer programs again this year. This year's ESY, or extended school year program, we will be serving 255 students, which is an increase of 30 students, and we're still registering, over the 22-23 ESY program. Additionally, we will be offering four shuttle runs for students. Students should be at their pickup location by 8 a.m., and guardians should be present to receive their students by 2.30 p.m. This information, again, will be on our website, but it will also be made available to those families who are participating in the summer program. Next slide, also for the summer, because we are committed as a district, as a Camden City School District, to making sure we support our students in um, and minimizing the summer slide or regression that occurs. So experts agree that children who read during the summer 
keep their reading skills sharp and are better prepared for the challenges of the next grade level. So this year, over 62% of our middle school students met their reading goals, and we are excited to build upon this progress until we reach 100%. To help us achieve our goal, the Camden City School District, with the help of the 76ers Youth Organization, is happy to provide every single middle school student with a pack of books to motivate them to read this summer and to add to their own personal libraries. We have uh, worked on that in partnership with Scholastic, and we are very, very excited. Also, students are encouraged to complete an extra credit assignment over the summer so they can kick off their 23-24 academic school year with um, some, some credits or some points earned up toward their first marking period grade. So we are very excited. Um, we want to motivate all of our young people, and we're targeting our middle school students so, again, we can continue to support them. So parents, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to the Solution Center, but all middle school students should have already received their packets, their summer reading packets. Next slide. And the middle school students were excited uh, to receive their books. And some of them even started to read them before they left school. And that's evidenced by the pictures that you see there. And it is so awesome to see our, our middle school students uh, excited about reading. Next slide. And it, not only is reading important for middle school students, but it's important for all of our young people. So the 2023 summer reading book lists are available as our students continue to advance with their reading performance. The Camden City School District is providing all students in grades K through 12 a summer reading list. All students and families are encouraged to visit the local Camden City libraries to check out the books and use the online links for additional resources. Please check out the Camden City School District's website and Facebook page for more information and the link for the summer reading list. Next slide. As was mentioned by our board president, um, we are so very pre pleased with the progress that has been made uh, and the teams that have worked so diligently to ensure that our code of conduct for our students has, was updated and that it was updated as a result of input that was received from students, that was received from staff members, parents, community members, so that as we move, and administrators, as we move forward, we will be able to ensure that everyone is aware of what our students' rights and responsibilities are. And so tonight we are excited to approve, we will be approving the 2023-24 Student Code of Conduct. Yeah, pause, thank you. And over the past few months, our Code of Conduct review team, as I shared, went through a comprehensive stakeholder engagement process to gain feedback as we revised our Code of Conduct. In doing so, our team met with school leaders, teachers, nurses, security officers, guidance counselors, and climate and culture staff. We also had an opportunity to hear from our partners, including but not limited to the Camden Education Association, the Camden County Police Depart Metro Police Department, the Camden County Youth Services Commission, and so many others. Additionally, my team and I also, also heard directly from students at a number of schools. Collectively, this feedback helped to inform our revisions. As you review our new code of conduct, you will notice our commitment to being restorative in our approach. And that will be a huge theme for next year. So you will hear us talking about that training. You will hear that theme over and over. We have to be restorative in our approach to supporting our young people um, as they are navigating through. We know that to truly help our students thrive, our high expectations must be coupled with high levels of support. In the coming months, we look forward to providing further training and support to help our schools implement these practices with fidelity. So as you can see on the slide, there is a QR code that can be used even if you want to, you know, hold your phone up to it now, you will be able to uh, be linked directly to our 2023-24 Code of Conduct. 
Also, you can visit our website and scroll to the family section where the code of conduct is linked as well. We look forward to providing more updates as we implement the code of conduct, our newly revised code of conduct. Next slide. So the Camden City School District's wonderful nutrition team along with Whitson's team, is offering Camden summer meals at school sites around the city. See the, the barcode that you can, the QR code that you can scan or webpage for further information or drop by our school nutrition table to learn more. Also, Saturday brunch is available here at the Camden High Campus from 11.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. All children, 18 and younger, are free, and adult meals are only $5. Come out for brunch or lunch. Uh, it's really good. Hot, homemade, French toast, parfaits, everything in between is served, and it's also a safe place uh, for our young people to, to gather for brunch. Next slide, shifting gear. So we're thinking forward ahead to the 23-24 uh, school year. And as you can see, we're trying, we are, we're not trying, we are preparing to move forward in um, an organized fashion. And so one of the things we want to share now is that our start and end times for the 23-24 school year will remain the same. Uh, so we will not be changing our school start and end times. And just as a reminder for our early childhood, elementary schools, family schools, and our Morgan Village Middle School. School starts at 8.40 a.m. and dismissal is at 3 o'clock p.m. For high schools, school begins at 9 a.m. and dismisses at 3.20 p.m. Again, those, th those times are the same uh, as we implemented this year. Next slide. And as we are in prepara preparation mode as well, uh, we are preparing for our uh, new year and our school leader updates. So I want to make sure that we are able to share with you where our school leaders and our lead educators will be placed for the upcoming year. And so when we take a look, I'm not going to read them all to you. Again, they will be on the website, but I just, I'm going to pause and allow you to uh, take a look at those uh, and also, I'm going to, I actually will go through them, but I'm going to walk over because my eyes are dim and the notes are very tiny. So if we take a look here um, and we start at CREAM, we'll see that our, lead our principal and lead educator will remain the same. So no changes at CREAM. Uh, ECDC, Principal Vaughn will remain the principal and we will be hiring a new LE, lead educator, to support the work at ECDC. At Caddo, there are no changes. We will keep Principal Dixon and our lead educator, Ms. Babylonia, uh, for the upcoming year at Cooper's Point. Ms. Janine Casella will remain the principal, and Mr. Jeff Grossman will be joining her, which is a new switch for Cooper's Point. At Davis School, there are no changes. Principal Montague will remain the principal, and uh, Principal uh, lead educator Martinez will support her. At Forest Hill School, at Dudley School, Principal Ruiz will remain the principal, and Dr. Crystal Breelove will be moving to join the Dudley family. Uh, Forest Hill School, there will be no changes. Uh, principal Satan will remain the principal, and Ms. Hamilton will continue to serve as the lead educator. At H.B. Wilson, we're also leaving that team uh, intact with Principal Harrigan and uh, lead educator Chiquequay, who will continue to support that school community. That's no changes. Principal Sapowski and L.E. Rosa Martinez will remain in place at Yorkshire. Uh, Miss Lana Murray will be retiring, uh, as we have already stated, at the end of August. She is staying on to support the transition. And uh, Mr. Michael Coleman, who serves as the lead educator, educator will be acting principal there. Um, and Miss Ra Raquel Garcia Wade will be joining Mr. Coleman at Yorkshire. Uh, at Morgan Village Middle School, Ms. Jania Robinson will remain the principal, and Mr. Sabri and uh, Mr. Sabri will remain, and Ms. Ford, Ms. Rakia Ford, will join him. I'm sorry, this is so awkward, but I can't see on that other side. Thank you so much for your patience. All right, when we take a look at our high schools, this is not helping. I need my. 
If we take a look at, <laughs> I may have to, if just call out the high school name. We take a look at the high schools. The first high school is BPLA. Principal Jenkins will remain the principal at BPLA. And we are um, going to have Ms. Latine Bradley join him to support the work there. What's the next school? Just say it. Brim, thank you. Teamwork, I love it. At Brim, um, Mr. Uh, principal Macrina is the principal remaining, and Ms. Hope Edwards Perry will remain as the lead educator there. At Camden High School, uh, Dr. Davida Co. Brockington will serve in an acting capacity while we search for a new principal at Camden High School, and she will also cover uh, creative arts. Dr. Brockington is currently the lead principal at the Camden High campus, um, so she is already uh, in place and we believe that this will be a great transitional leadership while we look to hire someone to be able to start the beginning of the uh, new school year. Uh, at uh, Cramden High School we will leave the lead educator team intact and so we will have Miss Cruz and Miss Cynthia Adams Buffalo to remain in their positions there for continuity. Um, Miss Wanda Poole will be joining Dr. Brockington at Creative Arts. What's that other, the next school? Eastside High School, Ms. Gloria Martinez-Vega will remain the principal. Uh, Mr. Scott Shanklin will continue to serve. He's serving in an acting capacity as the lead educator, and there will also be a vacancy. There is still a vacancy um, present at Eastside High School. We need two lead educators. Uh, SOAR Academy, Principal Bullock will be uh, joining the team at SOAR Academy to offer support um, for SOAR Academy, as well as to offer support on the Eastside High Campus, so we will have two administrators uh, there. And uh, uh, the final school is? Thank you, alternative school, I couldn't see it. I was, I was pulling for you. So Pride Academy, Principal Simons will remain there and uh, Ellie uh, Gay Brown will remain at that school as well. So this, the reason we're sharing this, and there are a few spaces where we have to um, hire for some lead educators and we are going to work to do that um, over the next uh, uh, couple of months, is so that any parents or any family members beginning July 1 when you go to different buildings, so you will know who's the principal, who's the lead educator, who can I get in touch with so I can ask questions early about my child's school. So again, this information will be posted on the, on the website as well. Thank you for your patience um, with my very gentle eyes. Next few slides, we're almost done. DTLR update, so it is very important as we begin to prepare for the new school year that we constantly keep an eye to um, how many vacancies we have, uh, how, how we're doing and faring with recruitment, um, and always looking with an eye toward retention. So our current teacher vacancy rate uh, continued to increase throughout the school year, which is typical going toward the end of the year, and is now at 14% with 103 vacancies. This number includes teachers who have left the district or will leave the district over the summer, as well as new teacher positions that have been added for the upcoming school year. The good news is we have 29 teachers already onboarding for the next school year. Also, there are another 20 teachers who have been recommended for hire. Paraprofessionals are urgently needed, so if you know anyone interested in becoming a paraprofessional, please have them reach out to our Division of Talent and Labor Relations so that we can support them through the application process. Paraprofessionals need to be Title I compliant. This requires either 48 college credits or passing the paraprofessional, parapro exam. Candidates who do not have 48 college credits receive training support for the parapro exam and are reimbursed after passing the exam. Becoming a, a paraprofessional is an excellent opportunity to work with our students and then begin a career that leads to a, a trajectory on, of a trajectory leading toward um, being a teacher or engaging in other uh, educational roles. This is a full-time, 10-month position with benefits. We encourage you to apply and to help us spread the word that we are looking for paraprofessionals and we will continue with our, with our targeted recruitment for those high needs areas. And now the last and final portion of uh, my presentation for the, for the night, which is my favorite, the district highlights. So if you go to the next slide, our Camden City School District 2023 STEAM 
fair winners um, from each of our, our middle school, our, for our middle school populations across. So the next couple of slides represent our 2023 CCSD Seam Fair winners by school. Students in grades six through 12 across the district were asked to create a project that uh, was centered around 21st century issues or concerns. Topics could cover anything from education, technology, science, medicine, climate, space, the arts, etc. The goal was for students to be creative, to think outside the box, and to select a topic that they were passionate about and wanted to learn more about. Our middle and high school science teachers did an outstanding job preparing our students to be successful. Special thanks to other content area teachers who supported students during this process. The finished products were absolutely amazing. As you can see from um, the pictures, our students were so proud of their work. And although there was only one winning project selected per school, all participants are winners. Next slide. More on our um, STEAM uh, fair, our high school winners, and a few highlighted STEAM fair projects are on the screen for you. Congratulations to the following STEAM fair projects. Brim Medical Arts had a solar heated doghouse. Camden High School, uh, their project was a rooftop garden. Creative, I Creative Arts High School, a drone sim. And Eastside High School, Allium Security, highlighted projects and our, ele and our electrical roads from east side and bacteria and water from Camden High School. So students were able to also use their environments to incorporate in this STEAM fair and it was very engaging for our young people. They did an awesome job. Next slide. So more great news, eight of our SOAR students were hired by Cooper Health Systems on June 6, 2023, after participating and completing the Cooper University Hospital Job Readiness Program. So proud of our SOAR Academy students and of our partnership um, with Cooper. This stemmed from the partnership we established with Cooper University during the Morning Accelerated Program. So this was an outgrowth of that and we're looking forward to being able to keep that pipeline going. So very proud of our young people. Next slide. The Camden School Nutrition Team hosted a school wellness event at Eastside High School, celebrating local produce grown right here in Camden County with Freehaven Farms. Thank you to Whitson's Culinary Group, Full Futures, Common Market, and Wellness in the Schools for your partnership. Excellent, excellent, excellent job. And you can see our young people were engaged. It was just an awesome time at Eastside High School. Next slide. More exciting news, our Camden School Nutrition Team collaborated with Farmer Hayes, a hydroponic gardening expert. Students learned about hydroponics, planted lettuce seeds, and then they took the food home. So it was just, again, a wonderful opportunity. Next slide. Just some highlights from our preparation for the prom. Students from all four academies were able to participate in the prep for the prom, which was a campus-wide event in anticipation of the prom. Be on the lookout for more, so you already have seen the prom photos, but again, we wanted to just circle back and highlight um, just how wonderful it was that we had students and also community partners honing their skills and their crafts to help our um, young people prepare. Next slide. We are pleased to announce our very own bilingual Spanish literacy teacher from Veterans Memorial Family School, Mrs. Carmen Carrion, was the recipient of the NJTESOL TESOL uh, and NJBE Bilingual Educator 2023 Bilingual Educator Scholarship Award. From a series of candidates, Mrs. Carrion was chosen as this year's award recipient. This scholarship, yes, this is awesome. One of our own teachers right here in the district, this scholarship is given to a graduate student who is enrolled in an accredited program with a major or specialization in bilingual by cultural education. Again, we are so very proud of Ms. Carrion. And also, next slide. 
to our Eastside High School seniors who received the New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy. Nine, yes, nine. And that number is gonna go up and up and up, but we celebrate the nine exceptional students who were recognized by the New Jersey Department of Education for their proficiency in a language other than English. Their dedication to language learning and global understanding is truly inspiring. We are so proud of their achievements. We celebrate our young people. And a special shout out to Ms. Erica Okafor, who is leading that work for us in the district under the leadership of Ms. Uh, Christy Weitzel. Excellent, excellent job. Next slide. Early Childhood Family Conference. So on May 25th, the Office of Early Childhood hosted its annual family conference at the Salvation Army Croc Center. This year's theme was In Their Feelings, a look into preschool emotions. Over 100 parents, community partners, and staff participated in the day, which began with continental breakfast, followed by an informative keynote session with PBS Kids columnist and author Deborah Farmer Christ. Participants moved into interactive small group sessions that focused on how to help young children regulate their emotions. Each family received a copy of the keynote speaker's book and was able to make a feelings chart and other do-it-yourself sensory materials to use at home with their children. And finally, during the catered lunch, social emotional materials were raffled away. And the highlight of the event was honoring families from district and private provider sites with Parent of the Year awards, acknowledging their commitment, dedication, and involvement throughout the school year. Next slide. And this next slide, you don't have to say any words. On June 21st and 22nd, we had an incredible opportunity to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our exceptional class of 2023 on their long-awaited graduate day. And despite a slight hiccup due to the rain, we grace things we were graceful toward the end, our plans, and ensure that the entire event unfolded magnificently. A huge shout out to our facilities team uh, under the leadership of Mr. Cox and Mr. Um, Mr. Bethea. Are you here, Mr. Bethea? Yes, yes you are. I took my glasses off, but I saw your beard. You're here. And also, uh, Mr. Vera, the team, everyone working together um, to make sure, uh, Mr. Goldman, just everyone worked together to make sure we were able to transition. And it was one of the best graduation days, uh, those two days that I have seen. Um, for those of you who could not join us in person, we invite you to visit our captivating Instagram page, where we launched the first ever Instagram CCSD graduation takeover at Camden Public Schools, where you can relish the memorable highlights from all five heartwarming graduation ceremonies. And now just two uh, upcoming events. Save the date. July 5th, we're thrilled to announce the kickoff of our exciting 2023 summer program and meals. Join us for a fun-filled day with something for everyone in the family. And here is a little bit of what you can expect. Free food, you can indulge in delicious meals, snacks, and refreshing beverages throughout the day, courtesy of our Camden School nutrition team. A DJ, get ready to dance the day away, thanks to DJ Jew. Also, family resources. Explore a variety of resources and information available for families. Whether you're seeking educational support, health services, or community programs, we've got you covered. And games, engage in thrilling games and fun activities for all ages. Challenge your friends, family, and neighbors to um, be a part of friendly competitions and make lasting memories together, thanks to the Camden County Metro Police Department. You'll also be able to see a New Jersey motor vehicle van. So take advantage of the convenience brought to you by the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission, which will provide services to make your experience smoother and accessible. And you'll also be able to receive support with undocumented families. We believe inclusivity and support in inclusivity 
and support for all. Connect with our dedicated team to learn about the resources available to undocumented families and receive the assistance you need. And a special thank you to the Latino spirit. You can also receive enrollment support, get expert guidance and support in the enrollment process for schools, programs, and other services. Our team will be there to help you navigate through any paperwork or questions you may have and much more. So please, finally, mark your calendars, invite your friends, and join us on July 5th for an unforgettable day of fun, community, and support. We can't wait to see you there. Stay tuned for more updates and information leading up to the event, and please help us spread the word. Next slide. Swag, students working to access greatness. Um, our summer swag program is back and we are excited. Our young people have started to come in and we're looking forward to them being engaged in work this summer. Um, it's always wonderful to see them in and out of our buildings, supporting the work in our offices and learning these valuable life lessons. So we're excited about our swag students. Summer break, thank you to the students Parents, guardians, and our hardworking, dedicated staff who yet again made another successful year possible. We had a strong finish because we have strong team members who are focused on our young people. I want to wish each of you and your families a wonderful, well-deserved summer break. Please take this time to refuel, refresh, and recharge for the upcoming school year. And at this time, we'll transition back to the stage where we will be able to, our board president, or his designee will acknowledge our retirees. Thank you, and let's give all of ourselves a round of applause for the strong finish that we had to the 2022-23 uh, school year. Thank you for your attention. Good evening. At this time, we're going to congratulate all of our retirees. We're going to start with Ms. Lana Murray, principal for 25 years, Ms. Karen Pasesia uh, for over 20 years, Ms. Lisa Rondon, 25 years, 20 years, and Ms. Ramona Parche. Thank you so much for your commitment to our students and happy retirement. Testing, thank you. Testing, testing. All right, and so thank you very much. Um, we honor and acknowledge our retirees at this time. I'll turn it over into the hands of our general counsel to lead us through public comment. Thank you, Superintendent. The Camden City School District welcomes the attendance and comments from all members of the public at its meetings. This public comment period is your time to present your comments to the board and the superintendent. Each person who signed up to comment will have three minutes. You will be notified when your three minutes are up, and you cannot yield your time to another person. When it is your turn to speak, please come to the podium and address all of your comments to the superintendent or general counsel. Please be courteous to your fellow community members and keep your comments within the time frame allotted so that everyone has the opportunity to speak. At the end of the three minutes, the microphone will be cut off and we will end your comment time. We also request that you please conduct yourself in a respectful manner. The First Amendment is not absolute, and the board can prohibit language that is inappropriate. For anyone whose comments or actions harass, intimidate, or threaten the safety of any person, we will provide you with a warning or immediately end your comment time. 
We will not interrupt you during your three minutes of comments unless we deem it necessary. If a member of the public speaks about a staff member, interruption may be necessary to caution the speaker of the dangers of slander. After the public comment period is closed, the superintendent or her designee will address your questions to the extent provided by law. I will begin by calling the names of individuals wishing to provide in-person comments before reading the written comments. As a quick reminder, all public, uh, written public comments read aloud during the board meeting are the views of the person submitting public comment and are not the views of the superintendent, the advisory board, or the Camden City School District. Thank you. And the first individual signed up for comment this evening is Eric Figueroa. How y'all doing? Eric Figueroa, Camden resident. Can you put your, the mic close to your face? First time talking in one of these, so work with me. <laughs> All right, Eric Figueroa went to Cam, uh, Camden resident, went to uh, Davis Elementary 32 years ago. But I'm kind of in here to reference uh, Karen Borelli, as far as she asked me to come support her. I think she's a very nice teacher. Like I ain't sure why she's on administrative leave, but I'm not sure what to say that she's just a great person. Like uh, she go, up, she went far for me. She went above and beyond. And to this day, I can call her and ask her for a favor. She asked me to come up here and talk. I'm not sure what to say, but give her a shot. She's a good lady, very sincere person, and I hope that y'all just give her a chance and let her get her job back. Other than that, I ain't got much to say. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Figueroa. Next person signed up for comment. And I have a difficulty reading the first name. Oh, Kiara Henry David. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, my, my handwriting is a little messy. <laughs> Hi, my name is um, Kiara Henry Davis, and I'm a graduate from Brim uh, Medical Arts, and I'm also here to talk about Ms. Borelli. Um, again, I heard that she's on administrative leave, and just as he said, she has been a great teacher to me as into students, and I was just hoping that she can get back into the classroom as soon as possible because she is the head of the bridge program for Brim Medical Arts. She's been doing that for 10 years, and she's also lead for the summer program as well for the internships at the local hospitals and things like that. I've also had the privilege of being in a summer internship and she helped me and she's been like just a great mentorship for all of the students. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Henry David. Sorry. The next individual is Damian Irizarry. Good evening, my name is Damian Rizari, and I'm a rising junior at Brim Medical Arts. Majority of people know I am a Camden High cheerleader, but I am also a manager for the CHS baseball team. I believe our other sports other than football and basketball <clears throat> don't get as much attention or acknowledgement. The fields of the baseball and softball teams are horrible. The one batting cage, we first need to continue what we have in high school to allow the middle school graduates continue their athletic journey before college. Also, as the class of 2025 president, there are rumors going around of our advisor, Ms. Luke, being in a type of suspension. We all haven't heard from her since like a week or two before school ended, and this is the time where Brim as a whole needs her the most due to she helps all of the interns that receive paid internships, including myself. She helps with contacting the professors or directors of the programs, also getting our work informs on track. I also help to recruit students for BREM, and she plays a, signif a significant role by being the person to help me with this process and making calls and going out to the enrollment events so we can 
uh, get students for our upcoming class. Also, she is one of the people in charge of our summer bridge program, and she makes sure all the freshmen attend and is capable of coming to the school and having productive and effective teachings being taught during summer bridge. So can the public, especially the students of Brim Medical Arts, get a sense of understanding of what is going on? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Arizari. The next individual signed up for comment is Jose Delgado. Good afternoon, uh, Superintendent McCombs, the board, everyone. I hope everyone is well. My name is Jose Delgado. I live in the city of Canton for many years. Today I would like to discuss, and forgive me for reading this, but I know this is three minutes and you're very uh, quick whistle. Today I would like to discuss the district supervision of the student activity funds, district policy 3453, and the New Jersey Administrative Code set forth how this account is to be managed. Student activity funds, revenues are generated from ticket sales. It is supposed to be administered at the school and supervised by the principal. These funds are not public monies. They belong to the student and the administrative code stipulates that they are to be used, quote, to pay for student group activities, close quotes. The district serves as a guardian of these funds in a fiduciary capacity, as far as I can tell, that is not what is happening in our school district. At first, I thought that it was just an administrative snafu, but then I received two checks signed by the superintendent and the business administrator that allocated over $12,000 from the student activity funds for the purchase of rings and pendants for 62 non-students. I first brought this matter to the attention of the superintendent in a certified letter dated March 15th of this year. My letter sought clarification as to how you determined, the superintendent determined, that the student activity fund could be used to buy gifts for non-students. I wanted to give the superintendent an opportunity to correct any misunderstanding I may have about the matter. For some unknown reason, you, Madam Superintendent, ignored my letter. I must admit that I felt disrespected but I wanted to deal with this matter in an adult and responsible manner. So I sent letters to the commissioner, the county superintendent, soliciting their help to encourage you to respond. Again, silence. When Mr. Uh, Raymond, when Mr. Raymond Cox, the business administrator, chose to ignore my phone messages or emails, I went to his office on June 22nd. He told me to come back June 28th, tomorrow. I must admit, by this time I was tempted to just let the matter drop, but I obviously can't do that. Silence would be tantamount to complicity on my part to whatever is going on. Let me pause to make it clear, Superintendent McCombs. I really have no problem with an unknown someone giving you two pendants. The only issue here is the use of over $12,000 from the Student Activity Fund to purchase gifts for 60 plus adults. So please, would you please consider answering five questions that I have. There are many more, but I have five. What is the justification? Thank you, Mr. Delgado. If you have specific questions, if you want to leave them, if you have them you in writing. You want me to let me ask the question? Uh, unfortunately, the three minutes are up, but if you have, if you want to uh, provide the, the three the specific questions in I wrote, writing, I wrote a we will provide you a response. We'll take a look at those. If you want to try to submit them again, the ones you were going to say tonight, we'll, we'll take a look at those as well. Thank you. And thank you very much. Mr. Delgado, those, if you can give those questions to the young lady there so that we can address them, we would definitely make sure. If you have those questions written down, if you don't, if you can give them to the young lady sitting right there to make sure that we get those questions. We would appreciate it. Thank you. The next individual signed up for comment is Kevin Ruiz Baroa.
Good afternoon, Madam Superintendent and uh, board members. My name is Kevin Ruiz Barroa. I live in Craven Hill. Wasn't born there, but I was pretty much raised there. And tonight, I did also come for Karen Borelli. I know that administrative leave is something that happens with the board, and you guys are doing your best job managing that. I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that Karen Borelli's integrity in this community is unquestioned. And I, I think that by now, everybody here knows that. She's been doing this for really, a really long time, and she's also a cornerstone for Brim Medical Arts and the school system here. There's very few other people that I know that would do what Karen Borelli does for as long as she has, with as many hurdles as she's had to get through. Um, and I really just wanted to put that out there. Let's get to the bottom of what's going on with Karen Borelli. Clearly, the school and the community really, really needs her back. And also, I have uh, five questions here. Jose Delgado was a mentor of mine, so anything I can do to help. What is the justification for using student activity funds to buy rings, pendants, as gifts for 62 non-students, given that Funds from this account can only be used for student group activities. Two, who are the six individuals that received one of the six complimentary rings provided by the vendor? Three, why were only five of the 15 CHS basketball team mothers given pendants? Why were the other 10 CHS mothers ignored? What about the WWHS mothers? Where did the idea originate to use student activity funds to give rings slash pendants to 62 adults. How, that was number four. How, and number five, how could you and the business administrator, the legally designated custodians of the student's money, sign two checks totaling over $12,000 from a district-wide student activities account not mentioned in the New Jersey Administrative Code and district policies? Could you please take this opportunity and answer my slash Mr. Delgado's questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruiz Baroa. If you have those questions in writing, that would also be helpful. <laughs> the next individual signed up to comment is Jamil Miller. Hello, how you doing? My name is Jamil Miller, um, Camden City resident. Um, Brim alum, um, I feel like Brim was um, the cornerstone of my education to help me grow into the man that I am today and the teacher slash mentor to help me get there through poverty, um, homelessness, um, educational struggles was um, Karen Borelli. Um, her integrity is on question here today and I feel like that's, um, that shouldn't be a thing. She's one of those teachers that's passionate about what she does. She puts 110% and everything she does and make sure she tries to strive that the students that she teaches are above and beyond um, knowledgeable about what they can receive and how they will be successful in life. Um, without her, I feel as though um, you're doing a disservice and I feel as though she needs to be um, brought back to the students immediately to be able to provide her educational experience, her expertise, um, and just her wisdom to the students and guide them to being successful throughout the future. Um, I feel as though if this isn't a thing, this isn't the BRIM culture, and everybody knows her for being part of BRIM and what she can um, lead the students to become in the future as well. So just wanted to speak on that topic as well and um, bring that to her attention, just as most of other people here have as well. So please um, consider this. Thank you, Mr. Miller. The next individual signed up for comment is Sean Brown. Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. In 2011, I was on the school board and we were a few minutes from voting for a budget. And as an appointed school board member, Jose Delgado actually, I remember this, as the CTE coordinator who gave a presentation, he said, the superintendent gave us a budget, it's been represented that this includes everything that's needed. Jose asked the CT coordinator at the time if the lift in the garage at Woodrow Wilson worked as part of their automotive program. And the guy says, no, it doesn't. And as I briefly said earlier, this argument uh, <laughs> starts between Jose, myself, and the superintendent because we're saying, you told us everything was in here. Clearly, it's not. 
did the principals have the opportunity to submit their request or those opportunities heard? And there was a whole discussion. Why am I telling you this story? We were able to threaten our vote in order to make that argument. Tonight, I want to congratulate the board members because I think at the very beginning when the um, committee reports were given, I know I'm a weirdo. I heard the word CUSAC. I got so excited because I see how you are step by step, day by day, meeting by meeting, strategy by strategy, getting closer and closer on working well on the pathway of having local control, which I think is something that's, that should be important for all of us in order to accomplish a lot of the things that we need to get. I don't know if you remember this. The report that the superintendent gave on harassment, intimidation, bullying, and the, and the um, other uh, types of infractions, we had to beg the superintendent to give us that information to the point where I put an Oprah request in because she was sitting on it and didn't want to give it to us. The level of transparency here is critical because once we have this information, we're able to use it to figure out if our strategy is working, what we need to do better, how we improve our models, which we saw in the very next section of the presentation. I know how far we still have to get as a district for our young people, but I also see tremendous strides that you've made as board members that the superintendent and her team are making as well. The last thing I want to say is a real quick suggestion. You have, if I count it correctly, about at least 49 more positions to hire between now and the first day of school. I have a master's degree. Namdi has a master's degree. We have super educated people in our community that have decided to serve our city but not necessarily in the way of being a classroom teacher or working in the district. And if I may, and I just want to say, I know, I know. Let me Mr. just finish Brown, my, yeah. the three minutes are up. So if you could submit any additional comments, because I think we'd be all be interested in hearing your suggestion. Um, if you can submit that in writing or, or approach afterwards, I think we'd be interested. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. The last person signed up for comment uh, this evening is Alicia Falcon. Thanks. Good afternoon, Superintendent McCombs and distinguished board members. Uh, I come here today to speak about the importance of parent involvement and community collaboration. In this community, mental illness and support exposure has only scratched the surface. Although I have seen growth, it's still an issue that lacks resources. Last week, a student who was 14 committed suicide. We had been fortunate to have worked with his family in the past for other issues, and they have participated in some of our community events. Parents Invisible was crushed to hear this news. One of our goals as an organization is to connect families with resources to aid them in all aspects that may affect their ability to receive quality education. Camden is unique. Our students are faced with so much adversity on a day-to-day. -day. So we are here to help, but we are only a small organization of eight people. That brings me to why it is important that we work together to advocate for our families, to bring them the resources they need, and to inform and empower them. Our parents come from different backgrounds and may not be aware of the questions to ask or the people to call. They may not know what signs to look out for or the resources they have available. As the executive director of Parents Invincible, I think it would be in the best interest of our families to meet with the superintendent to dis discuss ways we can collaborate in order to best serve our, our families and in turn our students. With our operations and established community, we can find a way to meet parents where they are and help empower them through knowledge and community. Side note, M Schools is an organization that partners with school districts, schools, and education service providers, along with students and families that address the holistic needs of undocumented students K through 12. M Schools provides partners with workshops uh, to educate them on the unique needs of those students. Camden has about 11,000 residents that were born outside of the US higher than the national average by 2%. This may not be representative of how many are undocumented, but it gives us an idea. It is crucial for us to work together to help this demographic, but schools have not opted to educate themselves and take the initiatives to support this cause. If the board would be willing to support this cause, we hope that M schools could be as successful as it's been in other cities like New York. And through collaboration, we can help all of our families equally. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Falcon. And I apologize, there is one more individual signed up for public comment. Um, the next person and last person this evening is Gabby Gonzalez. Oh. Thank you. Hopefully we can hear from Ms. Gonzalez at the next meeting. We do have a few written comments. First writ written submission is from, make sure I can read this, Jacqueline Rodriguez. My name is Jacqueline. I am a parent of two children that attend Dudley School. As the school year finished, I would like to say thank you to all the staff from Davis School. My sons and I are, very, are really happy with all the support they provided us this year. I was very new to Camden City and was having difficulties finding a school for my children until I met Ms. Villegas from Parents Invincible at a school event. Ms. Villegas helped me to do an application from one Camden for my children to attend a district school. I was very happy that Davis was the first school that gave me a seat for my sons because they love the school and have learned so much. I look forward to continuing being a part of Davis School and attending the amazing events they host for families. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Next comment is from Carla Villegas. Good afternoon, board members. My name is Carla Villegas. I am the community outreach organizer, manager, organizing manager at Parents Invincible. As the school year comes to an end, I would like to say thank you to the CCSD staff for helping families this school year with their issues. Thank you for allowing schools to be open during summer and for providing summer programs for students like the Caddo, uh, Eastside High, and Camden High Campus schools. I also would like to let families know that Parents Invincible has the tools to help them in finding the proper resources they are in need of this summer. We can help with summer programs, mental health programs, food bank resources, and college programs. Parents Invincible is open all year round and to make sure families are guided to proper resources when they are in need. Parents Invincible will also be hosting a book bag bash school supply giveaway hosted by our very own uh, Gabby Gonzalez in August. If you would like to partner or invite your families, please reach out to us. Everyone is more than welcome to come. Thank you, Ms. Villegas. And the last comment this evening is from Jeremiah Garcia. Even though I couldn't be in attendance today in person, I just wanted to spread notice to the Camden School District on the impact Ms. Luke has done, not only for myself, but for other students I've seen experience how unique she is. Since 2014, when I entered Brim Medical Arts, Ms. Luke was that teacher that I needed. She constantly pushed me to be better and was there for me when I needed someone to talk to. Ms. Luke has always gone out of her way to serve her students' needs academically, as I witnessed through my academic years. She's always been the teacher to expand students' networking as high school students get ready to take on higher education. She's always been acti active outside the classroom and constantly giving support to other departments of the school. Camden School District needs leadership abilities much uh, like Ms. Luke's so that students continue to get reminded on the importance of education and transition into careers and education that they're ready for. She is so passionate in her role as a teacher and I believe she deserves to remain doing what she loves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Garcia. And Superintendent, that concludes public comment this evening. I will turn it back to you for comment. Thank you uh, very much to our general counsel for leading us through the public comment portion. And as always, thank you for everyone who took the opportunity to come out, to share your voice, to provide feedback, both positive, corrective ideas so that we can move the district forward together um, to a better place. And so I want to thank all of the multiple individuals who had the opportunity to speak and share um, their um, support, their thoughts, their, um, their advocacy for um, Ms. Borelli Luke. Um, I am confined. I cannot speak um, because on the matter um, much further because it's a personnel matter, but please know that we are, are handling the process um, of uh, the investigation um, in accordance with all of the um, guidelines, rules, regulations, and procedures that we must. But I do thank you, we do thank you for sharing your voice and sharing the impact that Ms. Borelli Luke has on has had on each of you and on the Brim uh, family and the district. 
I also want to take the opportunity to uh, thank you, Mr. Delgado, um, for sharing, again, for coming in person to this board meeting. Um, again, I apologize if you felt disrespected by anything that I have done as a person. Um, that's never an intention of mine. Um, but thank you for sharing. I look forward to seeing the five questions that were shared um, on your behalf. I have jotted them down, but I want to make sure that I have them in full. Um, and also, I want to thank you, again, for your inquiry into the use of the the district student activity funds. Please be advised that as of a couple of years ago, the schools no longer have autonomy over the student activity accounts. All of those accounts are part of the district's centralized financial system. In addition, the student activity funds are included as part of the annual review by the independent auditor, and there have been no audit findings with respect to the district's management of its student activity accounts. We will continue to ensure that the district fiscal practices in all areas are compliant with board policy and state regulation. And again, I do look forward um, to being able to um, receive those questions in full to make sure that there is a meeting arranged so that we can have a face-to-face -face, um, discussion. Again, thank you. I want to also thank um, the list of uh, individuals who spoke on behalf of ca uh, parents and Vincible, um, uh, Miss Alicia Figueroa. Thank you, Board President. Um, Miss Jacqueline Rodriguez, Miss Carla Villegas. Thank you for uh, the feedback you provided, especially those who spoke about the positive experiences they're having. But also, thank you for challenging us to continue to improve our efforts as we are all working together to support our young people. So we do look forward to being able to collab collaborate, connect further, to be able to do whatever we can collectively to ensure that our young people are safe, and especially when it comes to their mental well-being that we are doing those things in a way that's going to support our young people together. So again, thank you, and I do look forward to further conversation uh, and discussions in those areas. Mr. Brown, thank you as well for, um, for your feedback and for sharing. We will continue to work um, to ensure that we're doing everything possible collectively as a board, as a district staff, to move the district um, forward to and shepherd it into sustainable local control so we look forward to providing more updates. Um, the district received a CUSAC review on June, interim review on June 20th. 20th, and we are awaiting those results from the county. Once we do have those finalized results, we will absolutely, we are required to share them publicly so that we can look at where we've come and where we need to go in order to, again, shepherd the district to sustainable local control so we never have to um, be in this situation again, um, being under state intervention. And so I want to make sure that I have addressed all comments. I did her. I did them all. It's a group. Yeah. So thank you so very, very much. Um, again, I look forward to connecting to ensure that we are able to uh, really continue to increase our collaboration. Thank you for the accountability. And again, um, thank you for uh, all of the feedback that has been shared. Um, Mr. Delgado, if you don't mind connecting, and you may have already done so with Ms. Beeman, who I think is still sitting I'm not sure where she is, I can't see because the lights are so very bright, um, to uh, arrange for a meeting so that we can connect. And I do publicly, uh, again, want to say I had no desire to, I'm sorry. No, oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I did not uh, mean to disrespect you at all. I respect you highly and thank you for your feedback. Um, and that's it. I want to thank you. I, at this time, I'll kick it over to the board president to see if you have any uh, questions. Um, from the board members. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. Are there any board members that have any uh, questions and or comments? Yes. Board Member Gonzalez. Thank you for everyone who attended tonight and for your advocacy and questions. Um, as we have historically have had concerns with our budget and I find that Mr. Delgado's concerns to be one of full validation um, I suggest, uh, Minister Wasim, that if we could um,
quite possibly put a policy in place as a resolution uh, that will clearly define um, the where where we when and when these gifts come from, and with alternative uh, options to purchase these gifts, so that we don't have incidents like these in the future. Um, and again, it can just come through a resolution or policy but that we can put in place um, just to, again, alleviate uh, um, these incidents and not run into them in the future. Um, when it comes to uh, the advocacy that we have had uh, regarding uh, Ms. Borelli, I just, uh, I would ask that as an administrative team and as a board, uh, that we do everything in our power to expedite the process uh, to ensure that we run into a smooth and academic transition into the new academic uh, school year of 2023-2024. Um, and lastly, I, I want to clarify um, in regards to my abstention for the uh, policy that was voted upon earlier. Uh, I am in full support of the uh, studies and requirement for the Latinx and uh, African American studies uh, under the, a policy that took place with the um, uh, Policy and Governance Committee. Uh, when it comes to the Teaching and Learning Committee, I'm not sure if, if I may have been absent during one of the times, but I was never presented with any kind of curriculum that would be used for these studies. And, and without that information, I don't think um, I, I'm able to uh, fully commit myself to, to voting a yes. And again, that was the reason for my abstention, um, not that I do not support uh, the requirement. Um, but again, no curriculum was ever presented to myself, or I'm not sure if to Sister Nye either. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Gonzalez. Appreciate that re response. Board Member Jackson. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I just wanted to point out really quickly, Superintendent McCombs, I don't think we addressed Mr. Irizarry, who had some questions about um, facilities and things like that. Correct, sweetheart? Did she, did she address? No, okay. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't skip Mr. Irizarry and his questions regarding um, the baseball fields, facilities, and things like that. So I just wanted to be sure he wasn't skipped. No problem, and thank you so much for having the courage to come and speak. We appreciate you. Board Member Gillespie. Yes, good evening. Um, I just wanted to express my excitement for the adoption of the new code of conduct today. It's been a long time coming, and I'm just so happy to see a handbook that's detailed, up-to-date, and easy on the eye. It includes everything from rights and responsibilities to the grading policy to the uniform policy and so much more. I'm encouraging all students, parents, and administrators to read it and become familiar with it, and I'm looking forward to seeing the differences in this upcoming school year. Thank you to everyone who played a part in making this happen, Madam Superintendent, my colleagues, the executive leadership team, and most importantly, the Code of Conduct review team. Thank you, and we appreciate you. Thank you much, Board Member Gillespie. Vice President Nelson. Sure, thank you. Um, I just want to take a minute and say thank you, Superintendent, and your team, um, just for the hard work and efforts. Um, I think the district is doing a lot, a lot of positive movement. Um, we spoke about QSAC. Um, it's just a lot of hard work that goes in um, behind closed doors. Um, often we hear about the things that aren't done correctly, so um, to be moving in the right direction, um, to not be speaking about school closures or um, people losing jobs and you know, again, I don't want to jinx us or anything, but to not be having those conversations are, are great things. Um, to speak about, you know, uh, adding to our fleet and, you know, having our own bus services and um, being fully staffed in those areas, you know, are great things. Um, there's a lot of great workers in the district, a lot of positivity that's going on, and a lot of collective efforts. And just as a board member, when we reach out, and ask um, you know, for updates and feedback is something that we get you know, quickly and it's something that we appreciate because then we know um, that you know, our community is being served um, in its best interest. So I just wanted to say thank you, um, thank you, and thank you to 
my fellow board members um, who have a very challenging job. You know, I say it because it takes a lot. Um, I understand why a lot of retired people um, once sat on the board because of the time it takes um, more than just the monthly board member uh, meetings um, from graduations to committee meetings to scheduled visits and, you know, everything else is it, it, a lot, you know, it's a lot to be the only elected position that doesn't have, you know, any money or stipends behind it. And I'm not saying it's about the money, but, you know, often you got to take off from work. Um, it's just a lot of commitment and responsibility. So, you know, thank you to all my fellow board members that take the time um, to, you know, just service your community. Uh, I appreciate your efforts. Thanks. Thank you much, Vice President Nelson. Anyone else? You good, Karen? You good? I just want to um, horsey back off of what Vice President Nelson said about the sacrifice um, most of you all make in um, these efforts to serve our community and, and true trueness of uh, service. Um, I heard the word this evening a lot, parent engagement. And I just want to say, you know, we can't stress that enough across this district as community members, parents, teachers, uh, the, the whole slow coaches, you know, extracurricular activity, you know, coordinators, is get involved. We have to really change the culture and get our parents involved in our children's education. There's been numerous amount of studies that the more a parent is involved in the education of their child, not only just being concerned of the curriculum and everything, just being involved, sitting down with them. We can expect with this past several years of uh, learning loss due to COVID-19, even before then, we can expect just our teachers alone to educate our children. And if parents have issues with education, then we can have that conversation about the adult education that we used to have in the district several years ago. But that is so important if you doing the extra work to get involved with our young people, with our children. And if you have challenges, this numerous amount of, of extra work after school that um, our children can get involved with. I know sometimes we get we we beat up a lot on the student athletes um, about the extracurricular activity just in sport and play. We see the difference that it makes in a child's academic career, let alone getting involved with the three R's and reading, writing, and arithmetic. So I just can't stress that enough. I'm speaking to the parents and the uh, individuals out there. Thank you, very, and, and to um, my brother over here, board member, um, I, think, I think we went back several years in the making of trying to get the uh, African American studies and Latinx studies involved. Um, we do apologize if it kind of missed the teaching and learning committee, but we want to make sure that, you know, your committee is full aware. All I know is I'm just so, so excited that we get an opportunity to teach our young people about themselves. And, uh, you know, it's, it definitely is, I support it because it's definitely better than what we've been getting with the, yeah, we teach about everything from the three little pigs and, you know, fairy tales, and, but we don't teach about ourselves. So I think that I'm encouraged by that. We just got excited, but we'll make sure that the committee get an example of the curriculum that's out there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, board president, and thank you uh, to our board members. I'll first start with responding to board members, and then I went a little bit too quickly, so I hope the individuals are still here. Damien, yes, you're still here in the back, and there were a few others that I omitted in jumping back and forth between my notes, so please um, charge it to my head and not to my heart. First, um, board member Gonzalez, um, I I, I, th I agree with your suggestion in creating a policy to spell out how um, you know we go about the purchasing of um, athletic um, rings, et cetera, for all of our sports, or you know those incentives to help to promote and celebrate our young people. And I think that would be helpful just to lay something out as another um, layer, so we're all 
on the same page with accountability. Um, with regard to Ms. Karen Borelli Luke, yes, we are doing everything possible to expedite that process and for the board um, to be aware as well and to reiterate that for those of you who advocated for Ms. Borelli Luke, we are doing that. So please know that we are we are trying to move this along as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you very much. To Mr. Gonzalez, we will make sure that you receive the curricula. Christy Weitzel has uh, is available to share the curricula with everyone, anyone who needs it, um, not only at the next um, teaching and learning committee meeting, but it can be shared before then. So you can have your eyes on it right away and see that. Um, thank you so very much for, for sharing that as a need so we can make sure we take care of it. Um, Ms. Gillespie, thank you for, for um, just your comments with regard to the code of conduct. And again, thank you to this board uh, for pushing us. As I said in the work session on, on yesterday, um, this newly revised code of conduct is because we got pushes from the board um, to really take a look at how our young people, whether or not they even understand the code of conduct, what's in there, and then whether or not their family members understand and how are we implementing with fidelity um, and making sure we're restorative, all of that started the genesis of that change came from this board, and this board asking questions, probing, um, and really pushing us to that place. So again, thank you um, for acknowledging that, but it definitely um, was a team effort all the way. Um, board Member Nelson, thank you, uh, as always, for your feedback um, and for your guidance and for your support, and we will continue to work forward um, to ensure that, again, we're shepherding the district into sustainable local control. And to our board president, thank you again for just acknowledging the importance of uh, making sure that we ensure that all of our young people know who they are and know where they've been, where they've come from, and have a just a holistic, positive view of the world and where they fit into the world. So we are, are so very grateful. I'm gonna go back as I shared um, as well. Thank you, board member. Um, for reminding me, I think a couple board members did, but to make sure that we addressed your um, question, Mr. Irizarry, um, because I think it was board member Jackson, if I'm not mistaken, to make sure we, um, again, that's why we're here, to support each other to make sure we don't miss anyone because everyone's voice is important. So again, that was my mistake. So I wanna go back to Damien, what you shared for us. I know, yep, yep. Okay. I wasn't up there. What you share for us, thank you um, for your feedback and telling us um, your experience and, and through your eyes and the lens of your eyes as a leader on the BRIM campus and someone who's very involved in the community with regard to our athletic offerings, but not only that, our emphasis and focus on different areas. So, you know, I do know that you are a student athlete and recall seeing you many times um, cheerleading and doing many things to celebrate um, your school. We have looked into the conditions of our fields to examine how we can broaden our focus beyond um, our perception of, uh, your perception of how we view basketball and football. And we do thank you, and that's a positive statement, thank you for sharing your views. And we've already started this year ramping up our middle school sports. We also thank you for your interest in the Summer Bridge program, and we're happy that it was beneficial, and we will ensure rising ninth graders behind you have equally effective experiences. This summer, to go back to the facilities improvements, we, the district is focusing heavily on facility improvements. We acknowledge that while we address the internal needs, the internal uh, needs of our instructional environments, we also must do a better job of addressing our athletic facilities, all of them, not just those that are related to, as you stated, uh, football um, on the exterior. I am pleased that we have been able to establish a capital reserve account, which will assist us in funding the improvements to our complex. We believe there should be equity for all sports program, and we know we have to work on that. We know we have to build it. There are many other sports um, that we need to make sure are incorporated and that our students have those spaces in order to learn, um, at, learn athletically. We believe there should be equity, and we will strive for that. All of our student athletes deserve to play on high quality fields, tracks, 
and courts, just as our students deserve to learn in the highest quality educational environment. So again, we look forward to you being able to come back at a future board meeting and say thank you to this board, um, to our district team because of what you see. We're telling you what our vision is, but we want to make sure that vision turns into reality, not only for, for you, but for the students that you're advocating for. So again, thank you um, for elevating and sharing your voice. Just two more responses. I want to slow down. Um, Alicia, thank you for your comment and concern. Um, like you, and I, I want to slow down because we did um, recognize one of our students um, in our memoriam slide, but I want to let you know as a response to your comment that we were shocked and heartbroken. And our continued thoughts and prayers do go out to the family uh, beyond our opening moment of silence this evening. We will continue to focus on mental health through the many programs we have, and we are continuously willing to partner with stakeholders like M schools. As we know, man, many families have unique needs, especially families who are newer to the United States and the city of Camden. So I, I, I believe you are already in touch with Erica Okafor, but we will continue to ensure um, that Ms. Okafor is in touch with you and that we can also have a dialogue into how we can expand our efforts. Was that it? Did I say that? Oh, yes, Ms. Rodriguez, I didn't specifically state it, but thank you. Um, I, I think I just grouped uh, too, too many people together. Thank you for sharing with us your thoughts on Davis School and your experience with your child, um, your children who are at Davis School. Um, we are glad that Davis is a great fit um, for your children to learn and grow and that your organization, like our district's family operations coordinators, are committed to connecting parents to resources needed between home and school to further students' academic and social success. So we do hope that you will take an opportunity to connect with Ms. Betsy Muniz, the Family Operations Coordinator at Davis, who implements and manages school-wide parenting initiatives and activities to empower parents to become positive, active participants in the education of their children, to also further enhance opportunities for families and to become an active member of the Parent Advisory Council at Davis School. We would love to hear your uh, feedback. We would love to hear more from you. Uh, in many other ways. And so thank you so much. Thank you everyone for your patience tonight. And I hope everyone um, has experienced that their voice has been heard and that you've had a response. At this time, I will turn it into the hands of our um, board secretary in order to lead us through the board agenda items. Thank you, Superintendent. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, to this evening I present to you our business office and administrative personnel and agenda items which include but not limited to the ratification of our contract with the Kansas City Federation of School Psychologists, the award of bids for financing of our next round of school buses for the 23-24 school year, as well as the award of various contracts to various vendors for various uh, facility improvements at Veterans School as well as Davis School. Along with our bill list for the month of June totaling $36,878,848.64. At this time, I'll now turn it over to the superintendent. Board, mm -hmm. board president, Pardon any questions? Uh, is there any questions? Yes, sir. Board member Martinez. I saved my time for now. So uh, I just wanted to, not questions, but more of comments. Uh, two things. Uh, again, I want to just thank the superintendent for the innovation that the team is bringing up. Latinx studies, African American studies, truly something that's innovative, and it shows that we are. Uh, putting stock into our diversity in our city. Second thing I wanted to mention is that uh, within the reports, I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, Ms. Erica Okafor has presented the dual language programming. Uh, I appreciate the fact that we are looking forward to how we can expand and become a pilot district that other districts you know, within South Jersey are not doing. That's a huge thing for our community in whole. Uh, dual language is not only for the bilingual or Spanish speaking community, it's for everyone. So I see that as a big holistic uh, opportunity to help with bringing together our community. And lastly, I uh, just wanted to acknowledge our student athlete who uh, 
you know, donated $75,000 to our school district, uh, I, I couldn't leave the meeting without saying the fact that this young man is not only, uh, you know, a great athlete, but he's also about giving back. And uh, it's a true legacy statement for him and his family. So I wanted to thank him publicly. Thank you. That's, that's great. Thank you. I think we all missed that one. Absolutely. Clayton. Thank you. We turn it back over to the district. Thank you, Board President. Um, at this time, if there is no other business in accordance with the powers vested in the State District Superintendent under Title 18A, I hereby approve today's superintendent's agenda items and business office agenda items. I turn it back into the hands of our Board Secretary for adjournment. Thank you, Superintendent. At this time, I open the floor for a motion to adjourn our final meeting of the 22-23 school year. Do we have a motion, please? Motion. We have a motion by Ms. Gillespie. Do we have a second? second? And we have a second by Ms. Jackson. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, this meeting of the Board of, Educa Board of Education is adjourned as of 7.37 p.m. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening.